What is up? We're back for the last live of tonight. Unless there's a chase, I don't know, but I might not even wake up for the chase at this point. We've been on all day. Uh, S Roads, thank you so much for the uh, link to this. So, um, just doing a brief short live <laughs> on Sebastian Rogers, uh, the kid that's missing out of uh, Tennessee, I believe. 15 years old, disappeared February 26. Uh, let's just watch a little video first before we watch the parents' interview. A new interview that came out. Sebastian Rogers, a 15 year old. Oh. The massive search for him is taking a turn as a Kentucky landfill is now being investigated. Peyton Kennedy is live from TBI headquarters with an update on the search and the national interest in this case. Nikki, according to the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, that landfill, which is in White Plains, Kentucky, is where the trash from Sebastian's neighborhood in the beach area of Hendersonville went on the day that he went missing. Now, the TBI says no specific information or leads took them to that landfill besides what I just mentioned. But this is more of a precautionary measure. The Sheriff's Office says this is happening to eliminate possible options and questions. But unfortunately, there are still more questions than answers since Sebastian was reported missing almost two weeks ago now. I spoke with a podcaster who focuses on sharing the details of missing persons cases in the South for some perspective on how these cases ripple through communities and beyond. Here's what she has learned from her experiences. I think it's just really important to keep an open mind when you're... What was that? It said Duchess? Oh, damn, it started over. Sebastian Rogers. If and Nikki, according to the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, that from Sebastian's neighborhood in the beach area of Henderson to that landfill, besides what I says, this is happening to eliminate answers since Sebastian was reported missing almost two weeks ago now. I spoke with a podcaster who focuses on sharing the details of missing persons cases in the South for some perspective on how these cases ripple through communities and beyond. Here's what she has learned from her experiences. I think it's just really important to keep an open mind when you're tuned in to social media and these Facebook groups, watching YouTube creators. Um, I think sticking to the facts about what law enforcement has released, what we know to be factual information is very important and encouraging people to continue to share out the flyers and the factual information and asking people, hey, if you see something, say something. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. Then somebody goes picking up the audio. Uh oh. The Facebook groups and the YouTubers. Cancel. Cancel. Uh, let's take a look at the new interview. We watched the previous interview. Now, in this interview, they did not show their face. This reporter here said that uh, she sat down with Sebastian, Sebastian Rogers' mother and stepfather and about the current investigation. Proudfoot, Katie and Chris Proudfoot did not want to show their faces because they say they were too emotional. All right. First and last names and spelling. Katie Proudfoot, K-A-T-I-E. Proudfoot, P R O U D F O O T. Chris, C H R I S. Last name's Proudfoot, P R O U D F O O T. So, I mean, first, just as parents, tell me what the last now over a week has been like for you two. Horrible beyond words. Um, this was an experience that I would have never dreamed would come. Honestly, I just, I can't put words to how hard this has been and how much it hurts not knowing where my son is, where, where he's at, if he's okay, just horrible is the best thing I can say. What about for you? It's rough. I mean, we are on. Day 11, no answers. And the horrible things that people say just keep rolling in, regardless of taking time to consider the facts and, you know, assumptions is what they're going off of. But 
I don't know. For us, it's we sit here and we wait, we wait, and we wait, and hopefully we'll get an answer, or hopefully he walks through our door, which would be amazing. I was going to say, how badly do you both want Sebastian to just walk through that front door to get that call? I'd give anything. In a heartbeat, I would give anything. There's not. It's not measurable. Let's put it that way. There's no measurable. Anybody says all it is. You've never sat in these shoes. You've never been in this situation. And I don't ever wish for people to be in this situation. And what what's Sebastian like? What's his personality like? What does he love to do? He, for the most part, is happy. He likes to laugh and joke and tell you all about everything and then some. Um, he loves games. Uh, he loves video games. Um, he loves to play with his Legos, um, even building things, uh, with me. We, we build little projects here and there, but, um, he's, um, he's always a character. Are there any, like, weird tendencies that he has that might be able to help people find him in this search? I don't know how helpful to finding him, but he fidgets <coughs> constantly. He loves shiny pennies, paper clips. He's always, like, uh, whenever we go to the grocery store, um, he always looks on the ground and looks under the register counter, and he's always looking for shiny pennies everywhere, um, paper clips. He loves to bend them out of shape and play with them, fidget with them. Um, he loves playgrounds. Um, I mean, we've said it before, he likes fishing and, and things like that, but... Um, cats. Boy he, loves cats. He does. He loves cats. It's his favorite animal. <laughs> um, I don't know, he's just, he's a good kid. There are no leads, nothing caught on video. Your son has been missing for 11 days now. How does that make you feel as parents? I, I mean, I don't have words to describe how I'm feeling right now. I mean, I, every day is, harder than the last I mean we're out we're looking we're we're trying to make sure that everyone stays looking and doesn't let his face fall to the bottom of a feed or or get covered by some other nonsense I mean I just we just want our boy home when you walked in Monday morning and didn't see Sebastian in his room, what was your gut reaction? My very first reaction was, oh, he got up and got breakfast. <laughs> um, but when I realized he actually wasn't in the house, I've never experienced sheer panic in the way that I did. And basically for every minute since, that um, not knowing where your child is, is a pain that um, I've never, I've never known pain like this before. And walk me through the events that happen, you know, from Sunday, leading up to Monday when you didn't see him that morning? Sunday, uh, we were out and about. We had a, a really good day. We were out um, doing our thing, running around. You know, we had dinner that evening. And when we came home, uh, we had a pretty good evening together as well. Um, he was playing right up until bedtime. And then some, I let him stay up a little late. Um, 
And when I told him to go to bed, you know, he's like, I love you, mom. I love you, puppies. And uh, he went to bed. And um, I went to bed around midnight. Everything seemed fine. And uh, when I went to wake him up for school, that's when I, I couldn't find him. He wasn't in his room and he wasn't in the house. And that's when I panicked. And when you panicked, uh, what'd you do? First thing I did was call my husband and um, I said, he's not here. My husband said, what do you mean he's not here? I said, he's not in the house. And he said, you know, immediately just started, you know, did you check here? Did you check there? Did you look here? And uh, I ran through the house. And um, at that point I was hysterical for lack of word. And uh, we called, we we three-wayed the um, the police. And um, I'm within minutes, they were here. I couldn't tell you exactly how long. I know it was fast. Um, and we haven't found him. When I got the phone call that he was missing, um, like she said, we asked questions like, where is he at? Check this, check that. And then we called the sheriff's department. I called the sheriff's department. I stayed on the phone pretty much most of the time. Um, and then I... While I was at work, I asked for a relief, got a relief, got in my truck from Memphis and made my way to Nashville. And that was, I guess, Monday? The morning that he was missing, yes. Okay. And um, so what was your reaction when you got that call from your wife that Sebastian was missing? Initially, I was like, oh, he's he's goofing around again. Here we go. He's like hiding. And then when we talked about the places to check and he's not there, I was like, okay, stop. Instantly. Call the police. Instantly. I'm a black and white kind of guy. So. And to your knowledge, he didn't take shoes with him, right? He locked the door on his way out. Or I guess, what are some of the things that you think he did as he left? We checked for all of his shoes and none of them are missing um the door was locked and what was there some discrepancy as to what he was wearing when he went to bed or what was he last seen wearing what what was he wearing to bed that night when he went to bed uh he was wearing black um sweatpants with white stripes down the side And he had on a black, long sleeve black shirt with a print on the front. I'm pretty sure it was one of his... um, uh, Like Star Wars or Halloween or... um, Or even Minecraft. Yeah. Those are the three main things. the three things that he's... Majority is on his clothes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But he has his flavors. (laughs) And obviously you guys are going through the unimaginable and then, you know, getting a lot of like the kickback that you've seen on social media. I mean, how much worse has that made it for you two to go through something like this? Honestly, um, we stopped looking at it. There's a lot of terrible people in this world and I don't want to waste energy on any of that. I want the focus on finding our son. The facts are the facts. I mean, the the police know the facts and all I want, all I ask of anyone is if they're able and willing is to help find him, help spread his flyer, help look for him, call in if you know anything or see anything. But We just ask that people focus on finding Sebastian. And he's never done anything like that before, right? Just kind of walked out of the house. He's not a runner. Um, This is, this is not normal for him to run away. Um, If, I mean, I just, he's, no, he's not a runner. 
in any places, I guess, I know you, you guys have been told to stay in the house, right? Just in case he comes home. We, we are doing what we've been asked to do by the law enforcement agencies and everybody involved. I am not going to divulge anything more than that. Yeah. But if you, what I'm trying to ask, I guess, next is if you were to go out and search right now, if people want to help search, what types of places would you guys look at that he can maybe be at anywhere and everywhere that at this point there's it's been 11 days he could be anywhere yeah they've searched the woods they've searched parks they've searched creeks they've searched at this point it, it anything and everything anywhere that he could search. be staying out of the weather or or getting food or I mean, honestly, at this point, he could genuinely be anywhere. How hopeful are you, too, that he will come home? I will never give up hope on finding my child. Optimism is at its highest, our, regardless. Our son is out there. We're going to find him. And now just, I mean, publicly, like, obviously, police are now investigating a landfill. People are speaking out about that. What are your thoughts about that? Everybody has an opinion and their assumptions, and they are entitled to those. Everybody got an but answer. As I've stated before, all we've asked people to do is to look at the facts, not what everybody's putting out there. If they have questions, call the law enforcement agencies, and they'll give you whatever they can give you. But the assumptions are just that. They are an assumption your opinions. We pray for everybody for hopefully this never happens to you. And if it ever does, then you'll understand. But I pray it doesn't. And they're doing their job. They're looking everywhere they can for, my, for I mean, their goal is the same. We just want to find him. If you could say something to Sebastian, if he's listening, right now what would you say to him i would say that we love you and we miss you and we want you to come home and just know that that we all care about you so much you're not in trouble that door's unlocked and waiting for you to come home your puppies miss you your family misses you i miss you just come home. Anything else that you two want to add or clear up or anything like that? Okay. Just help us find our son. And so that was the interview. That's the second interview, as far as I'm aware. Um, it's what Sunday out and about vague, somebody said. Won't show their face. Won't say where she was Sunday. Uh oh, Facebook. Facebook people ain't playing, man. Uh, I don't know, it's crazy. This kid's still missing all these days later. They even switched the landfill in Kentucky, I guess. Kentucky, out of precaution. I want to see the rest of these comments. It's not loading up. Oh, maybe because I got to be on my Facebook. Uh, I'm not logged in. Cannot believe this kid is still missing all this time. And they scaled back the search, but they had a massive search. I think they even bought like the state guard to help with the search. Anyone else's alarms go off on one on one interview where the mother said when I woke up, he wasn't there. Just a sec that a little bit. I feel like if he was there, you would say he wasn't the what? When I woke up, he wasn't there. Just a sec a little bit. I feel like he was there, or you would say he wasn't there when I went to him. I don't know. That's so stupid. <clears throat> oh, they, they agree, though, I guess. I picked up on a lot of things. They're lying. I didn't really get nothing. I mean, when I saw the first interview, I just I didn't really get anything. Like, like as far as, like... Especially compared to the other Madeline Soto situation.
I don't know, man. It's just really weird that he's still missing all this time, and they scale back the search, and how far could they have gone? They searched the waterways, and people are saying because they didn't allow their faces to be recorded. I don't blame them. I don't, you know, they did the first interview. They had their faces recorded, but, you know, people look at every single aspect, how slow or fast you blink, how much you breathe or don't breathe. If you frown or don't frown, if you have your lips in or have your lips out, if you look down or up or all the way around or, you know, past tense, present tense. I don't know. I I don't know what to think. I'm just kind of hoping this kid turns up. It's been now, I don't know how many days, 11 days. Oh, man. Let me see if there's anything else real quick, and we'll call it a night. Sebastian Rogers. Oh, I mean, I could read this article, too. So, I mean... Kentucky officials have been unable to find any evidence after searching a landfill to locate autistic teen Sebastian Rogers, who went missing over a week ago. Rogers is believed to have left his family house with a flashlight in the early hours on February 26th. He was reported missing by his parents at 6.30 a.m. He hasn't been seen since February 26th when he is thought to have snuck into the Tennessee woods near his house. Damn. I wonder if they searched with like those, you know, like the infrared stuff. I don't know what the temperature is like over there. To be able to maybe try to track them. Uh, Tickle Tits McGee, thank you so much for the memberships, gifts. Appreciate that. Three of them. Thank you. Bama, thank you for the super chat. So she got Murdoch, Sus, Rocking Syndrome. Susie Chapstick, thank you for the me- uh, membership. Blonde Bomb, thank you for the membership. Mel you, thank you for the one month membership. Says, hey, Mel. And Wilson, of course, thank you so much. <clears throat> Let's see, Wilson in the chat. Yeah, I think I'm kind of crashing for today. I think I'm done. Um, let me see what else, though. That's Sebastian. It's the landfill. The landfill is believed to be where the trash from Sebastian's neighborhood in the beach area went on the day he went missing. Officers called the search of the landfill precautionary measure to eliminate possible options. I wonder if they put out, like, I know they, on one of the pressers, they showed, like, a map of the search, but I wonder what's the the most up-to-date, how much have they searched of the waters and the land? Did they just run away? That's the, that was the first interview, I think, with them on. Sebastian lives in Stafford Court, Hendersonville, on the northeastern outskirts of Nashville. I mean, massive surge, command center, everything. Hundreds of trained professionals and volunteers descended in mass to look for Rogers, coming through 2,000 miles of terrain on foot. I really hope it doesn't turn into something where we never really get any kind of answer or resolution or anything. But Summer Wells is still missing. Anyway. I'm going to call it a night and get some rest. I heard about that really, really going to call it a night and get some rest. I had a very, very long day. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Um, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. If there's a chase and I happen to wake up tonight, if I don't know if I will or not, but if I do, it's probably going to be in the second channel because I have no notifications. Also, if you want to join the mailing list to get notif- email notifications, join the mailing list. I put links to the videos that we do. And yeah. Good night, guys. Thank you so much. Take care.